Hey friends, as you know, we aren't a response channel over here at Luciano's Logic, but today we're going to make somewhat of an exception to that, though there have been response videos in the past. I wanted to take some time and respond to a video by a Facebook Christian apologist named John. John is a very interesting fellow. There actually is another response video to John that's been uploaded on YouTube, and it's a very interesting video, but that is not what I'm going to be talking about. I'm talking about a video that John uploaded earlier today. Well, hello there, atheists. You know, there's been a, uh, a screenshot of mine that I've seen floating around, and it's circled in red of a statement that I made. And the statement was about uh, a hypothetical situation if my family uh, and I were captured by ISIS. Um, would I convert to Islam? To save my family. In other words, if ISIS had me, you know, by the throat with a with a sword, and you know, ISIS said, "If you do not convert to Islam, I'm going to kill your family." Would I then convert to Islam to save my family? The answer is no. I would not. At least I would. I'd like to think that I would not. Um. That is significantly better lighting. But also, I'm going to point this out. I thought that John was an asshole when he made this comment in the video. And I let him know that in the comments of the video. But he left a comment on the video later on that proved that he was an asshole. And I'm going to be linking the video and the little Facebook post around it in the description of this video, assuming that it is still up by the time this video is finished. And I'm going to also be showing you the specific comment that I know shows that John is an asshole. But it's worth pointing out, and there aren't that many comments in the original post that point this out, this is a biblical belief. I'm not going to say that this is a Christian belief, but it is a biblical one. This whole idea that if you convert to Christianity and then you at some point disavow Christianity or you say that you are not a Christian in front of other people, that God will deny you in front of his father or Jesus will deny you in front of his father, that is a Christian belief. And it's part of the reason why it is that atheists can rightfully say that Christianity is immoral, but that is a belief. And if we're going to be talking about Christianity, it's worth pointing this out. But no, I would not do that. I would not convert to Islam even with my lips, which would then be uh, to deny Jesus Christ, because Muslims do not believe uh, you know, Jesus Christ is the Son of God and Savior and all that. Uh, so no, I would not do that. Um, you know, scripture teaches if you deny Christ before men, he'll deny you before the Father. And I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to turn my back on Christ. So yes, if I was captured by ISIS, and the ultimatum was either convert to Islam or I will kill your family, my answer is no, I will not convert to Islam. You know, atheists, this is the thing. Being a Christian is not for sissies. It's not for atheists either. Well, you see, John, the question shouldn't be, is being a Christian for Christians or for atheists? The question should be, is being a Christian for people who value the truth objectively? And is being a Christian for people who care about other people? And unfortunately, your answer proves that at the very least, your form of Christianity isn't for either ones of the sorts of people that I just designated. And that's a problem. It's a problem that your belief asks you to value it above other human lives, or at the very least that you would interpret it in such a way that it does that. It says something really dangerous, something really bad about you, that that's the way that you interpret your religion. You know, and I know some atheists say, well, I was a former Christian. No, you weren't. You may have been one by, by way of mouth and words. But, uh, you know, atheists, I guess, during that time that they thought that they were Christians, you know, they tried to play the part. And then when the wind blew a little hard or something, uh, you know, happened in their life or they, they underwent a tra traumatic experience, they fell off. They fell away. They gave up. I was raised Catholic, 
And then around the time I turned 15, 16, I became a non-denominational Christian. And when I was a non-denominational Christian, I started studying other religions. I wanted to get to understand them better, and I wanted to get to know my own religion better. So a couple of months after I started studying other religions, I started studying my own. And when I started studying my own, I became less and less convinced that it was true. I didn't have a moment of personal crisis. I didn't have a moment that convinced me that God wasn't real because of a personal tragedy or anything. I became an atheist because I started studying Christianity and because I found it unconvincing. And also, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that people going through a moment of personal tragedy and from that moment realizing that there doesn't appear to be a deity that has the sort of personal relationship with them that is described by the Bible, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that that's not a valid reason for someone to stop being a Christian. Because it is. You don't have to like it. You don't have to find it very convincing. I know a lot of people, even in the atheist community, who don't find that sort of logic particularly persuasive. But that doesn't stop people people from deconverting because of that. That's a perfectly valid reason for some people to deconvert. And oftentimes, because of that, people start studying the religion more in depth, and then they realize that the religion doesn't appear to reflect reality, at the very least, the interpretations of the religion that they are surrounded by and that they know about. So it's important that we recognize that there is validity to other people's deconversion stories, even ones that aren't particularly convincing to us ourselves. And this is why, you know, here again, to be a Christian, you have to have principles. To be an atheist, you don't have any foundation. There is no principle. So if compassion and humility are principles, and it would take compassion and humility to decide that you value the lives of your friends and your family more than you value your professed membership status in a community. The reality is, to say that it doesn't take principles to make the sort of decision that an atheist would make in John's mind is wrong. It's just incorrect. And it's also deeply offensive. If an atheist were captured and given the ultimatum to convert to Islam or they'll behead your family right in front of you, an atheist would convert to Islam. Maybe not in the heart, but as I said again, through the lips, they would, they would say the words. Because here again, atheists don't have convictions. They don't have principles. It would be easy uh, for an atheist to convert under duress. Because here again, like I said, Christianity is not for sissies. And it's not for atheists. That's the end of John's video. Now I want to go ahead and show you guys the comment that I mentioned earlier. Now that you've seen the whole video, and you saw that comment, can you see why it is that I call John an asshole? Even if you can't, even if you disagree with me, that's fine, but the reality is that I, at the very least, understand that from my point of view, John is definitely an asshole for having this belief. I stand by what I said, I'm willing to take flack for it, but at the end of the day, John went to that extreme himself. No one asked him, no one put the question before him, at least not that I saw, because that wasn't part of a thread. That was his own comment. It's entirely possible that someone did push him to that extreme, that someone did ask him that, but I didn't see it. I'm going to link the video in the description down below, so that way you guys can go and see it, you guys can go and comment on it, you guys can engage with me, but it is a group you have to join. That said, I want to talk a little bit more about this before I close out this video. The video was horrendous enough, but the comments add horror to this. Because at the end of the day, there's a big difference between deciding that you aren't going to convert to save your family, people who probably agree with you, people who probably share some beliefs with you, maybe not all of your beliefs, but at the very least, some beliefs with you, and who probably aren't that many people, and then deciding not to convert and endangering a children's hospital. John freely admits that he doesn't actually know what he would do in this situation very early on in the video, and I'm grateful for that, because I'd like to believe that John has more humanity than he has suggested 
to the audience, to the people who decided to engage with him, and that he would decide to convert to save other people's lives. I'd like to believe that he has enough humanity that he would decide to convert just to save even a single member of his family from death at the hands of a group of Islamic extremists. But. I honestly, sincerely hope that John would be wrong, and that John would decide to do the right thing. And doing the right thing is not maintaining pride in your beliefs and deciding that those beliefs matter more than the lives of other people. John made a really bad, really disturbing video, and I sincerely hope that in uh, watching this video and in responding to conversations with John, people can start to change his mind. Maybe not deconvert him from his particular belief system, but at the very least reach him in such a way that he decides to change his position on this issue. Because to a lot of people, it's going to be very apparent that John values his beliefs more than he values other human lives. And I think John would admit that himself. I don't think that he would pretend that to not be the case after making this video, especially because his particular beliefs, at the very least a conservative, more or less literal interpretation of those beliefs, would suggest that believing in the beliefs more than you believe in other people and valuing the beliefs more than you value other people is a part of the belief system. So I think that John would be honest enough to admit that. And I think that he and I would be able to have a conversation. I think that we would disagree with each other strongly. I think think that he probably wouldn't like me calling him an asshole, that's fine, because I stand by what I said, and if he called me an asshole, honestly, I probably am, at least to some people. That's fair. I think that part of the challenge of responding to these sorts of videos is that people don't want to always point out that this is part of the reason why this belief system is dangerous. Not every single version of Christianity has to include every single biblical belief, and many don't, but the reality is, if one did, it would be extraordinarily dangerous, and this is one of the reasons why. This idea that the belief matters more than other people, and that people shouldn't deconvert, even pretend to deconvert under any circumstances, it's just really dangerous, and it's really toxic. And it's important that we as skeptics and that we as people who want to challenge this belief system and people who want to reform the belief system, including people who are inside of it, be willing to accurately identify toxic beliefs within it. And that belief is definitely one of the most toxic ones. I hope that you guys have a wonderful day. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that we can have a conversation. John, I hope that we can have a conversation. And I will talk to you all later.